Okay, so we'll start. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. We'll start with the prayers. Thank you, Jesus. Would anyone like to do the opening prayer? Praise God. Okay, I'll do it. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you for bringing us here, Lord, once again. Lord, you have plans, plans for us to prosper, never for us to fail, to give us an expected end. Thank you, Father, for bringing us together in one accord, in one mind, to speak your word, to study the word, to speak the scriptures, to learn these scriptures. Lord, I believe that you are teaching us. Right now, it is your word being spoken. Your word being spoken by your spirit through your anointing. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, for all the good things that you are doing in our lives. And I believe, Lord, that in this session, you are doing mighty works, confirming this word with signs, wonders, healings, deliverance, and testimonies. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We believe, Lord, that right now we are going to have a blessed session because it is not any one of us speaking but it is you speaking to us because you know, Lord, exactly what we need. You know exactly what we're going through. You know, Lord, what we need in our daily lives. And so you are going to teach us, Father, exactly what we need to learn. And I believe, Lord, that as we are sitting over here, this word is not just passing through us, but this word is sunk deep into our hearts so that we cannot forget it. But it is in our heart. It is planted in our heart and it is producing a hundredfold harvest. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, I pray above Father. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Okay. Praise God. Now, I'll ask you all a question, okay? Okay, we were living a life in our past that was ungodly, correct? Yes. Now, why are we now living a life? The question that I, Jesus, I believe in Jesus, but why is it that even though I've accepted and even though I believe Jesus, my life now is still ungodly like how it was in the past? Why is my life now still ungodly, still unholy now, like it was in the past, even though now I have accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord, as my God, and as my Savior? What answer would you give that person? Because in that area of my life where I'm, you know, doing the ungodly things, I am still believing the lies of Satan. I have to expose myself to the truth that is the teaching, the word of God, which will help me, which has the power to change every ungodly thing in my life. Yes, correct. It is because in that area of your life, even though, you know, you have said you left, you let go of your past, you are thinking you let go of it, but actually, you have not yet let go of it. Right? We think, no, I'm no, we think that I'm no longer focused on the past. We think that I'm no longer, you know, focused on all the wrong things. I've let, like how Paul said, I forget the past. 
I have forgotten all those things. Means I don't allow those things to take control. But if we are still finding ourselves operating in that past and experiencing bitterness, experiencing the same things that we were experiencing, even after we say we have accepted Christ, then we have not yet let go of that past. We have not yet come to a place where that past has fully lost its control. We may say it has lost control, but it has not fully lost control yet. Right? Yes. Right. Yes. 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 Correct. Now, thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Let's go to Romans. Romans 5 was. Romans 5 12. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, anyone want to read? Can I read? Yes, Lauren. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Next verse. For until the law sin was in the world, but sin was not inputted. Imputed. Imputed when there is no law. Okay, now, he says, wherefore, as by one man. Who's that one man? Adam. Adam. By Adam, sin entered into the world. And death by sin. See, the Lord gave the law. The came through Moses. Before people who lived, there was sin, but there was no law. We see over here, as he says in this verse, Sin came at the time of Adam, but the law came at the time of Moses. So the gap between Adam and Moses, there was sin, but there was no law. And the Bible is saying, because there is no law, sin was not imputed. It means sin was not wrong. Sin was not punished. You know why? Because only through the law, a person can realize there is sin. For an example. If somebody is driving down a road at, let's say, 80 miles per hour and there is no speed limit and driving down that road, okay, no speed limit, nothing over there. If a policeman stops him, the policeman has no right because there is no law for that road. Correct? The Correct. policeman cannot stop him. The policeman cannot hinder him. But when there is a law saying there is only 50 miles per hour on this road and this city you are disobeying the law yes yes now when he's going at 80 is it wrong yes it is wrong it is very dangerous but is it is the law is the sin imputed is that wrong thing imputed no why there is no law are you understanding let me just mute okay are you understanding Yes. 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 Okay. Sin entered into the world, death by sin, by one man. See, we think sin came. sin, and that is why I'm a sinner. Right or wrong? Right. We think that because. Right. right. Yes, we do think that. We think that because I've done this wrong. I'm a sinner. But the Bible is showing us you are not a sinner because of the wrong you did. You are a sinner because of the death, because of the sin that came upon all men by the disobedience of Adam. In other words, you did not become a sinner 
you have made a sinner. And by again, Adam. Correct? Yes. And that's why it's saying you were made sinners. And now from the time gap of Adam to Moses, there was no sin was still there. And sin is wrong. Now see, this was for. Now see. Would like to read it? Lauren, do you want to read? Yeah. Yeah. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude, similitude of Adam's transgression. Who is the figure of him that was to come. Yeah. So what is he saying? Now, just because there was no law, does not mean there was no death? Death was still there. Nevertheless, death did reign. What do you mean by the word reign? When, we, when you think of the word reign, you think of the word king or queen. Right? The monarch, the king, the queen. They reign over the kingdom. In the same way, death reigned over the kingdom, our kingdom, this world, the human race. It reigned over us. Why? See, when God had given all dominion and all power to man, when Satan saw that God had given something that he wanted, why was he thrown down from heaven? Why was he thrown down? Before he was an angel called Lucifer, but he was thrown down into the pits of hell where he became Satan. Why? Because he was jealous. He wanted the power that was given to man. And what was the power that was given to man? The power that was given to man is man can open his mouth and speak words and it happens. Now, Satan wanted this power so Satan came in the form of lies. He came in the form of deceptions. He came in the form of thinking. Where he attacked man with lies. He attacked man with deceptions. Now, the moment man agreed with the lie, Adam agreed. Adam and Eve, they agreed. They were beguiled by Satan. They agreed to the lie. What happened? Death reigned. Death took rulership. The power that God had given to Adam and Eve to have dominion over this earth was given away to Satan. And because of that, Satan was having dominion. He was reigning over this earth. Reigning over the human race. Right? Yes. yes. And because of that, every man born from Adam, we were born with the sin nature. It's just like this. For an example, let's say you had a grandmother, okay, your grandmother died at, let's say, a young age at 9 or 10. Would you be alive today? No. 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 You wouldn't be alive, correct? Correct. Yes. Why? Because it is passed down the generations. If, if they are dead, that means if she died, that means you would have also died. Correct? You would have not been alive. Yeah. In the same way, Adam died because we came from Adam. We also died. We also were living in death. The death of sin. Correct? Correct. Right. Yes. Correct. Yes. Now, Adam was the first Adam. Jesus was the last Adam. But when the first Adam, when he was put into the temptation, he disobeyed, he fell into the temptation, and he lost the battle. Jesus, on the other hand, when the temptation came to him, Jesus won the battle, the last Adam, he won the battle by the obedience of him on the cross. He obeyed. And how do we know he obeyed? Father, not my will, but yours be done. When he said that, that was a sign of obedience to the Father. And because of that obedience, 
he won the battle for you and me. Amen. Now read verse 15. Let's come to verse 15. Yes. Someone can read. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. Now what did he say? But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. He's saying, just like how the offense of Adam, because he disobeyed. Whenever there is disobedience to the law, we call it an offense. Correct? It was an offense for them. Disobedience to the law. So when Adam disobeyed God, because of one man disobedience, many were dead. That's what the scripture says. For if through the offense of one man, many be dead. In other words, because of disobedience of one, many got disconnected from God. Now, some people stay like this. Why do I have to suffer? Praise God, just give me. Praise God. Praise God. Can you hear me now? Hear me now? Ashton, it's echoing. Is it echoing for Yes, yes. Yes, it's echoing. Yeah. Now it's okay, right? It's not echoing now. No. Yes, no. yes. Now it is okay. Okay. Praise God. Was yes. it breaking? I joined from a different device. Was it breaking before? Yes, it no. was. Yeah, in the middle. Okay. Then you should have told me. Okay, no problem. I was thinking it was me. I was thinking it was my internet. Okay, okay, okay. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. So as I was saying, I'll put the scripture. Just make him make me a call so I can put. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. Romans chapter 5. Verse, I think, yeah, 15. Five verse 15, yeah. Okay, so as I was saying, but not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God. So what is he saying? He's saying, by one man sin entered, death entered. But by one man Jesus, much more the grace of God has entered. And this grace of God is a free gift which is by one man, Jesus Christ, has abounded to many. So if the consequences of sin brought death, 
to many, then grace, which is much more, has now brought, which is much more the free gift, has now brought salvation to many. That's why the Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. In other words, you receive salvation because of this free gift called grace. You died because of one man's disobedience. You receive grace. You receive salvation by the obedience of one man on the cross. Hallelujah. Now, we learned about the sin and that we are no longer under the sin. Now let's see the righteousness. Let's see verse 16. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. In other words, one day we were condemned because of what we did wrong. In the sight of God, we were looked at as wrong. In the sight of God, God was looking at us and saying, you're wrong. One day we were in condemned because of what we did. But now today is the free gift of many. That is, we are justified. And what is justification? My case is tried. I am found not guilty. What is justification? My case is tried, found not guilty. You can write it down. And somebody can put in the chat also. Justification means... My case is tried. I am found not guilty. So now because Jesus came and he gave us his free gift called grace, we are now justified. That is, we were all one, once upon a time condemned. We were all once upon a time guilty. But now we are no longer guilty because we have been justified by the finished works of Jesus Christ on the cross. We are free. Hallelujah. Now see verse 17. For if by one man's offense death reign by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Notice that word, gift of righteousness. I want you to note that word, gift of righteousness. You know why? Because this righteousness doesn't come by your works. This righteousness is not what you performed or earned for. The Bible says it is a gift given to you. In other words, you received the righteousness of God through the grace of God. Now, many a times we look at grace and we look at righteousness as two different things. But let me tell you, they are connected together. Whenever we study, we look at them as two different topics. I'm studying on grace, I'm studying on righteousness. But we don't realize they're connected. You know why? We all received the righteousness of God by the grace of God. That means if you have not yet received the grace, you cannot yet receive the righteousness of God. If you have not yet received the grace and you're saying I'm righteous, it is not the righteousness of God. It is the righteousness of self. When I'm trusting in myself, I'm self-righteous, I'm self-focused, I'm self-dependent. I'm not trusting in God. I'm not focused on God. I'm not meditating on the promise of God. I'm focused on my own self. Right? Yes. It is. Much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. That means on all these years, death was reigning in this world. We were all sin. We were held captive to sin. We were held captive to death. We were held captive to, uh, you know, the lies of Satan condemning us. But today... We were, the, the death was reigning over us. But today when you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord, as your God, as your Savior, the Bible is saying, now when you believed in Jesus, now you are no longer captive under death, but death is captive under you because now you are reigning as a king in life through Jesus Christ. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, praise God. Only you are excited. Come on, God is saying to you, you are no longer held captive under death, but death is held captive under you. It is under your feet because now you have been made the righteous. You have been made accepted. You are made holy through the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. Amen. Praise God. Put this verse 17 in Amplified. 17 and Amplified. Thank you, Jesus. Read, see this. Anyone would like to read? For, for if because of one man's trespass, lapse, offense, death reign through that one, much more surely will those who receive God's overflowing grace, unmerited favor, and the free gift of righteousness, putting them into right standing with himself, reigns as kings in life through the, through the one man, through the one man, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. Yeah, thank you, Neva. Praise God. Now, what do you see over here? For if because of one man's trespass, because of one man's lapse, offense, okay, death reigned through that one, through one man, through one man, death reigned through one, much, much more surely will those who receive God's overflowing grace, unmerited favor, and the free gift of righteousness. Now, we always think that the gift of God is the grace of God. But the gift of God that is spoken about in the scriptures is not only the grace, but is also the free gift of righteousness. Hallelujah. Now, all, yeah, hallelujah, praise God. Now, all these years we were thinking righteousness is that I earn. Righteousness is that when God sees me, he is, you know, when you perform on stage and there are a judge, there is a judge or there are a few judges, what do they do? They appoint a winner, correct? Among all. Yes. Now, I thought it was, we all thought it was like that in the kingdom of God as well. God is a judge. If you are doing good, if you perform well, if you are good in his sight, he is appointing you as a winner. And that is you are made righteous. If you don't do well, if you don't perform well, then God is angry and now you're no longer righteous, but you're a sinner. But the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says no matter from where you came from, no matter what you did in the past, the Bible is saying he still has given you the gift of righteousness. Amen. Amen. So was our mindset wrong? Yeah. God is a judge who's no longer looking at your action. God is a judge who's saying, I look at Jesus' action for you because his action is right. You come under his action and because he obeyed on the cross, you are made righteous. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Now all you need to do is no longer work for anything anymore. All you need to do is just get an understanding of the action of Jesus on the cross. Just get an understanding of what he has finished for you on the cross. That understanding sets you free. And that is what Jesus said. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. What is the truth? The truth is the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. When you begin to get an understanding of what Jesus did for you on the cross and you believe it, that's when you know the truth, you get the right understanding of it, and that's when that truth begins to set you free. Amen, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, what is grace? What is the definition of grace? God's willingness to use his power, his ability on my behalf, even though I don't deserve it. Yes. Grace is God's willingness to use his power, his ability, 
his authority. We say this, right? His power, his ability, his authority on my behalf, even though I don't deserve it. You know what is that? His power, his ability, his authority. You can say it like this. Grace is God's willingness to use his power to make me righteous on my behalf, even though I don't deserve it. His power is the power that makes me righteous. His power is the power that makes me holy. His ability is the ability that makes me righteous in his sight. And he's, used, he's willingly using this power on my behalf, even though I don't qualify for it. Even though in the natural, I don't deserve it. But because he is giving us his power, his strength willingly, I can come in front of him. I can come into the throne room boldly, taking possession of all that he has promised for me. Now, when I started off, I started off with past. We focus on our past. If we are still experiencing the old, it is because our mind is unrenewed. It is because we are still controlled by the past. In other words, Satan always wants to connect your identity to what you did in your past. Right? Satan wants to connect your identity to what you did in the past. He wants to connect your identity to what the wrong you did in your past. But according to the Bible, the Bible is teaching us and saying, your identity is not connected to the past. Your identity is connected to what Jesus did for you on the cross. And that is why Paul is saying, I forget the past, but I remember the cross. When I say I forget, many a times you're so focused on forgetting the past. It is not only about forgetting the past. What are you remembering? Only when you remember something, you can forget something. If you don't remember something, how will you forget something? If I don't remember what Jesus did for me on the cross, and I don't focus on the finished works, how can I forget my past? Not possible. And all these years, we are trying to forget without first remembering. What is Paul saying? I forget the past, I forget what happened, and I lean forward to what God has planned, what God has purposed for me. And the Bible says he has planned and purposed a bright future, a future with a hope and an expected end. That's what Paul is saying. My past is saying I am a sinner and I'm going to hell because of all the things I did wrong. But now my future is telling me, according to the word of God, it's telling me I'm no longer going to hell, but I'm going to continue to do the work of the kingdom of God. And that is when I will be rewarded in heaven. Because that's what I said. Can you repeat that, my past and my future? Okay. I was saying, you cannot forget your past if you don't remember what God has promised. You cannot forget the past if you don't focus and you don't remember the cross. What Paul is saying is, I forget the past. I forget those things which are in my past. And I remember and I focus on all the things that God has planned for me. And according to the Bible, the Bible says in Jeremiah 29, 11, that God has planned for me. God has thoughts for me of a plan, of a future, of full of hope and an expected end. So what is Paul saying? I look forward. He's saying, I focus no longer on what I did in my past and how I was as a sinner, but I'm focusing on the hope, the expected end that God has for me. Not that, uh, what my past is and what my future is, that one. Praise God. Okay. If anybody got it, you can repeat it again. Okay, but I will try. As I was saying, uh, in the what I was saying is, in the past, Paul is saying, is it that in the past what Paul is saying and in the future? Is that what it is? Nelan, you want me to repeat? No, actually what my past says that I am a sinner and what my future says. Okay. What my past says is, I am a sinner. What my past says is, I have done wrong. Neelan, before you came to Christ, were you playing video games? 
No, not video games, but watching cartoons. Ah, watching cartoons. So, were you watching every day or once in a while? Once in a while. Once in a while. Okay. Now, when you are watching those cartoons, what else would you do? What else did you do, Nalan, before you came to Christ? Um, okay. okay, okay, I know, I know. Before you came to Christ, you would spend hours and hours playing outside, football or whatever. Now you're spending hours and hours studying the word of God, right? Yeah. Yes, correct. See, thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, before, that was your past. Your past was before I spent so much time. I don't want to study much. I don't want to, you know, there was no, nothing between you and God. You did not have anything. You used to go for mass, of course. You used to make the rosary. But you used to not have any understanding of the word of God. But now when you're understanding the word of God, you are spending more time in the word than you were spending playing the football, right? And now, do you enjoy it? Before, one hour used to be so boring. One hour mass, boring. Two hours, Easter vigil, so boring. Correct? Right or wrong? I have experienced that. Yes. So boring. You know, feel tired. One hour. I have to spend one hour. But now, you are ready to spend five hours, six hours with the word of God. No problem. Why? Because, because your past was, your past was, I did not have anything to do with God. I would make the rosary. I would, you know, go for mass. Uh, if there is some retreat and my mother takes me, then I will go. But otherwise, there is nothing that I had to do with God. But when you came to Christ, now what happened? You were studying the word so much, spending time so much. Now Satan will say, see, all those years you wasted your time, right? You did not spend with the word of God. You did not spend with God. And now you will start condemning you saying, why you wasted all this time? He will always connect your identity to your past. Saying you, God doesn't love you because you wasted so many years. I was actually according to yeah. I was actually hearing the teaching before the class. This same teaching. Praise God. Same thing. I was yesterday, uh, I was listening. And those th same thoughts are like, you know, where was I? Where, why was I caught up in my world so much that, you know, I was not uh, so, and it was like, it was condemning, okay? Like, uh, why why did you not you know pay attention why did you not respond to your calling you have you know god is calling you why did you not pick up your bible and start reading and i was like waiting you know one time in the future i will do it before okay before i would do it in the future i'll do it at this time you know i'll do it after a certain point so the Holy Spirit convicted me and said but are you not thankful for the time you're spending with me right now are you not yeah. grateful that you didn't go another year without knowing me this way? So it's like instant switch, you know, from condemnation to praising him for his mercy and favor that he's shown already. Praise God. Yes. Praise God. You know, Selena, Alistair and Neelan, you all are so young and, uh, you know, to, um, to make correction unlike like myself in the 40s and uh, I was talking to I uh, sent a message to Tina a few days back to say look at this generation and the resources that y'all have compared to us if only we had it 20 years ago we would have made a lot of wise choices with the help of the Holy Spirit we didn't have any of this and how blessed you guys are to get this at this tender young age, which we never received all this during our time. So there was condemnation. If only we knew this 20 years back, if only, if only. Yeah. Yes. Praise God. And now when you get an understanding of it, it begins to change your life completely. 
Now, when you begin to understand this love of God, this mercy of God, this compassion of God, that's when your life is never the same again. Now, as I was saying, Satan will always connect your identity to your past. Because of your past, he will see your identity is a sinner. But God is not connecting your identity to your past. God is connecting your identity to what Jesus did for you on the cross. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Yeah, somebody was saying. Alistair, can I ask you to explain again that example of God being a judge? Like, you know, when you go to yes. a performance and God's your judge, there's a judge there and the judge is judging you. Can you share that example again? That was just so beautiful, Baba. Yes, yes. Okay. So as I was saying, when you perform on, you know, let's say perform on stage or when there is some performance, there are there is a judge or some judges who are there who will appoint a winner, who will appoint somebody. And we think God is like that way. If my performance is good, if I have lived holy, if I have worked hard, if I did this and I did that, now God is appointing me and saying, because you did, I'm pleased with you. But the Bible is saying, there is nothing you can do to please God except faith. That's what he says in Hebrews 11, 6. Without faith, you cannot please God. So God is saying, I'm not a judge judging you because by a performance. He's saying, I've given you the grace. And when it comes to grace, it is no longer by your works I'm judging you. I am judging you now because of what Jesus did for you on the cross. And that is why we are justified. Our case is tried, but we are found not guilty because we come under the finished works of Jesus Christ on the cross, what he has already done, what he has already finished for me on the cross 2,000 years ago. And because he has finished it all, now I'm no longer waiting for God to do something. Now all I need to do is just believe and receive what he has already done for me on the cross. Amen. Boom, boom. Amen. Oh, well. Hallelujah. Beautiful. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You got it, sister? Absolutely. I, I, I got it, but I wanted it to be repeated. So we are all meditating on this. It's such a beautiful way to understand that God is not judging us on our performance. I see that's one of the biggest deceptions. Absolutely. Satan will Total always lie. deceive. Till today, I've not yet seen a person or met a person who has told me, you know, I never had that deception where, you know, I have to work. I always thought God loves me. Every person that I've seen, that I've talked to, that person will say, yeah, you know, Satan used to tell me, I did not go for mass today. It's, it's Sunday and I did not go for mass. Or it's Christmas and I did not get to go to mass. And Satan started to condemn me. <laughs> Praise Preach it, Lord. Preach it. Praise Jesus. Okay. I want to go to a scripture, 2 Corinthians. Five verse twenty. I'll put the full chapter. Thank you, Jesus. Chris Scott. Twenty and twenty one. KJV. Anybody would like to read? Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead. Be ye reconciled to God. For he has made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now, we always, we always take verse 21 and we say, you know, we are no longer sinners, we are made righteous, right? But we don't... Okay. You know, connected to verse 20. Verse 20 is very, very important. What did he say? Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. Now we think I am an ambassador. Now, which verse comes first? 20 or 21? 
summer saying 20, <laughs> summer saying 21, which one to agree? You did not learn to count in school. <laughs> 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 yeah, okay. But actually it is 21 that comes first and then comes 20. Nelan is right. You know why? I'll show you this. See this. He's saying we are ambassadors for Christ. See, he put the word for. Do you see that word in verse 21 for? That word for can be replaced with the word because. He's saying because Jesus was made sin for us who knew no sin so that we might be made now the righteousness of God in him. Because we are now made the righteousness of God, we are ambassadors for Christ going out giving them the gospel, giving them the light so they can also get out of the old sin, get out of the old life, and they also can now be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Did you ever see this like this? Never, first time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for showing, showing us this. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this mathematics is always different. <laughs> God's system. Thank you, Nilan. Well done, well done. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Because when I began to study, and that's what he even speaks before this, he speaks about reconciliation, ministry of reconciliation. He's saying, now because you are no longer sinner, you are made righteous. I can't just sit down with my legs in the air saying, I made righteous, I made righteous, I made righteous. But now God is saying, yes, I made you righteous. Now you are an ambassador who is supposed to go and help others also to receive their identity in Christ. Not just sitting there, going and telling people, I'm righteous, I'm righteous, I'm righteous, but not <laughs> teaching them how to be made righteous. Wow. I would say we're experts in that. Going and telling people, you know what, I'm righteous, you know what, I'm holy. And when people ask, how you're righteous, you don't remember what you did. I don't tell, but Jesus is saying, I'm righteous. <laughs> did God tell you to go and tell people about who you are in Christ or who they are in Christ. <laughs> yeah. You have to go and convince yeah. them and show them the word, show them the love of God and speak to them, tell them, show them who they are in Christ. That's the job of the ambassador to represent Christ. We are representatives. We are representing Christ in the world of darkness. We are representing the light. We are representing Christ. We are the witnesses of his glory. That is why Jesus said, you shall be my witnesses in all of Judea, Jerusalem, Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. In Acts 1, Jesus said, what is he saying? You can only be my witness. You can only share my, share your gospel, share the good news, share the grace of God. You can only go and share the testimony of who God is when you first understand who you are in Christ. And according to the Bible, who you are in Christ is you are made righteous. If I'm thinking I'm a sinner, will I be able to help others to come out of that sinning sinner mindset? Will I be able to help others? No, not at all. No. If I'm deceived, can I help others to get out of deception? No. But the moment I've understood that I've been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, now, now, I can be made right in the sight of God. And that's when I can go and teach others how they are also made right in the sight of God. Now. That's the job of the ambassador. We are ambassadors for Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, we Jesus. represent him. Um, you know, I've seen many times. It's very subtle. It's very, uh, uh, like you, you can't really say, but uh, when you preach, you should see the person's focus. Is it me or is it Jesus? Like, I was in a wretched place. I was in a really bad place. But if not for him, I would not be who I am today. Because my Praise identity God. comes through him. Amen. Praise God. It's very subtle. Uh, you know, the way, the way it is even put out. 
you know why because like... it is all spiritual yes. it is very subtle because it is all spiritual it is all happening underground in other words which i can't see i can't see it happening for an example when i see my best friend okay uh, an example let's say a and b a is looking a is in the world a is studying the world and he brought b to a retreat and suddenly a is seeing his best friend b manifesting now all these years he, he was wondering what is wrong i thought b was a normal person why is he manifesting because everything happens underground you don't know it is spiritual you can't see that's why i said when the seed is sown you can't see it growing you can't see it sprouting you can't see all of that why it's all spiritual that's why it is subtle to us the reason why it is subtle to us is because it is all spiritual praise god praise god Are you understanding? Yes. 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 Now, just like how Jesus, who knew no sin, was made sin for us, we, who knew no righteousness, are now made the righteousness of God in Him, in Christ. So, are we made the righteousness of God? Yes. Yes. Be careful of my statement. Are we made the righteousness of God? We yeah. are the righteousness yeah. of God. Okay, but the scripture says that we might be made the righteousness of God. So are we made the righteousness of God? Yes. Yes. We might be made. Why is it that we might be made? we already are the righteousness in Christ Jesus okay lord said something that others did not say yes we are made the righteousness of god then what did she say in christ, christ. Jesus. in christ jesus so when i ask you are you made the righteousness of god how in christ the moment you remove that in christ out then the righteousness of god came because of your work right yes this is yes. the subtleness i was talking about yeah this is the subtleness i was talking about yeah yeah praise god he, he satan can deceive you by twisting the scripture he twists the scripture it looks like the scripture sounds like the scripture there is a different meaning he deceives you Praise God. Just with three Beautiful. words. Yeah. Just with three words, we get to see. Yeah. Two words actually. In him. Or in Christ Jesus. Two to three words. Because if there is no Christ, if you are not made righteous in Christ, that means you are made righteous some other way. And the only other way is made righteous through the law, through your performance. So how were you made righteous? Were you made righteous by what you did? No way. You were made righteous. We were made righteous through Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, you know, Jesus. Now, if we start to verse seventeen over here, this is a verse that we many times get connected to, and we read again and again. Okay, this verse. Therefore, if any man be in Christ. He will become a new creature. All things will pass away. Behold, some things will become new. He is a, okay. is a new creature. Is, okay. is, is. Is, correct. He is a new creature. All things All will things. pass away. All things are become new. All, All things. things. All things are, All things are passed away. away. And behold, All things are become new. Okay. All things will pass away. are past away are past away so we are waiting that god will one day god will accept me one day god will heal me one day i will be made righteous but what is he saying all things are past away behold some things are all things all things all things all things are become new 
so our spirit we do we have a spirit no we are a spirit and we have become new because our spirit is we so we have become new because our spirit has become new 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 correct now we became new because we believe in jesus that's what the bible says in ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 we are recreated right does the bible say that so now we are recreated we are reborn let's go to that ephesians 2 verse 8 to 10 yeah someone read for by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of your sins it is the gift of god not of works lest any man should boast for we are his workmanship created in christ jesus unto good works which god had before ordained that we should walk therein in 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 them in the in the praise god hallelujah hallelujah now for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift gift Thank what is the god. gift of god grace grace grief what is that gift of god love jesus faith faith jesus 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 okay faith love and grief righteousness love. righteousness jesus yes. is righteousness did you see earlier the gift of righteousness <laughs> so in other words he say because of grace you are saved through faith and this grace is not of yourselves it is not your performance see yes the grace is a gift of god i can't deny that grace is you know a free gift given to god but because of this free gift called grace of god i receive another free gift that is called the righteousness of god because i put my faith in his grace what is his grace his grace is the finished works of jesus christ on the cross because i put my faith in his grace because i put my faith in his finished works on the cross i receive another gift called the gift of righteousness and what is the gift called righteousness the gift of righteousness is that you and i are made holy are accepted in the sight of god Thank you Jesus. We're not condemned. We no longer we no longer are living a life of condemnation. We are made right. We are righteous. We are accepted in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anyone would like to add anything before I continue? Give it time. Time. Uh, yes, I'll do. yeah it is just like hum half an hour you are teaching on uh, grace and righteousness praise god but we will still continue for some more time yeah yeah uh aliston i would like to add something yes yes so I... thank you, you jesus you. can you hear me a call <laughs> yeah Uh, so i was saying on uh, you know about our identity so can we go to matthew chapter 4 verse 3 okay is yes, alistin you can read this and when the tempter came to him he said if thou be the son of god command that these stones be made bread okay 
So we all know that, uh, you know, this is the time when Jesus had heard the voice of his heavenly father saying that this is my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased. And now he's gone here, okay, to this particular place. And the devil tempts him in his thoughts by saying, if you are the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. In reality, Jesus was and is the son of God. But the devil was trying to tempt him by making him doubt, doubt his identity in Christ. When you and I came into the word, how we got born again? By believing the word, believing in this word, this gospel that we were hearing. And the, we received the gift of the Holy Spirit. We received the gift of tongues and every other gift. Okay. But as we continue, this I'm talking about myself, as I continued in the word, okay, now Satan started putting lies in my mind saying that, okay, now you are justified, now you are, uh, you know, saved, now you have to do things, you have to perform. Now God has saved, you know, now you have to perform. If you don't perform, now God is going to judge you. How many times many people fall for this lie of the devil, right? Because... Yes. At that point, I did not have an understanding of this topic called righteousness, that I am the righteousness not based on my works, but because of what Jesus did on the cross. That's exactly what happens even in the book of Galatians chapter 3. If you see, Paul is angry with the church in Galatia because those people received the gospel by faith. But after listening to some other kind of a gospel, now they get back into works. They started with faith, but they get into works. So this thing is so subtle. Like, you know, you start off with faith, but then you can go into performance without realizing. And only when you have an understanding, a understanding and having the revelation of grace and righteousness, that will set you free from all these lies of the devil. Praise God. Praise God. Correct. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. That's what, uh, you know, I was saying, I gave the example of the judge and I was saying, we think that God is like the judge judging us. No. In the sight of God, we see no matter who we were in the past, no matter what we did, no matter whether we qualified or we did not qualify. Nobody can say, I qualified, you don't qualify. We were all sinners. According to the Bible, we were all sinners. Maybe I can say I'm a better sinner than you. Maybe I can say, no, I'm not it. But in the sight of God, sin is sin. God is not saying this sin is better, this sin. God is saying sin is sin. There is nothing called as better sin, worse sin. Sin is sin. Sin is unholy. Small, small sin, big sin. <laughs> yeah. Small <laughs> sin, big, big sin. White lie, blue lie, black lie. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> lie is a lie. See, lie is a sin. sin. Yeah. Because Satan will come and speak. You. See what that person is doing. Look at you. You are so holy. Either he will condemn you and con say you are wrong or he will condemn somebody else and say you are right and they are wrong. Right? Either he will come and say you are wrong, see them, they are living so nice life, they are studying the word of God, praying in tongue, look at you, you are not even going to church one in, in a week. Or he will say, see, you're going to church, you're praying, look at them. They're not doing anything. You're good. They are unholy. Correct? Either way, he will come. And if you don't have the word, if you don't have the truth, you'll be deceived by the lie. But when you have the truth, you Absolutely. will never be deceived. You know why? Because when Satan comes with the lie, he will try to torment you, but you will begin to open your mouth and speak the scriptures and he will get tormented. What is our job as a Christian? Our job as a Christian is to torment Satan. Trouble him, torment him. <laughs> yes, that is our job. 
All these years, he was trouble. trying to trouble me. Yeah. What Papa will say, what trouble, the trouble? What Papa will say? Yeah, yeah, trouble, trouble, trouble. trouble. Yes. Trouble, the trouble, correct. I mean, look, look at him as um, uh, Dr. Priya shared. Look at this uh, scripture here on the screen. Like he's going to the son of God and trying to butter and put maskachaska for Jesus there. How subtle he is, huh? Yes. Questioning his identity. Yeah. And as Alistair was saying, if we don't know the word of God, we don't know our identity. So, and Jesus, and this is a perfect example of Jesus himself dealing with the situation. Jesus is not saying, come, let's sit down and have a chat and we'll bring some biscuits and some coffee and some tea. He's saying, it is written, it is written, it is written. Yes. Praise God. And when I see Jesus, his response was not, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> yeah, he didn't answer with, with just his thought. Yeah. He could have finished right in there just by doing that. Poof, bye bye, see you later and go. That's what his <laughs> job would be done. <laughs> yeah. He had all that power in him, right? But he's responding <laughs> with the word of God. Yeah, because. Uh, Jesus' whole life on earth is to set an example to how what kind Amen. of life we are to lead. Amen. That is Amen. why we are called to be imitators of Christ. Not imitators of Alistair. Not imitators <laughs> of Neil. Not imitators of Selena. Not imitators of Dr. Priya. Not imitators of Christina. We are called to imitate Christ. That is Amen. Amen. And, you know, like any problem, okay, anything that comes your way, ask one question. What would Jesus do? Because Jesus says, look to me, I have overcome the world. Everything, every trouble, every sickness, every uh, depression, anxiety, whatever it is, he has so overcome it. What would Jesus do in this moment? How would he respond? And you have your answer right there. Right there. That's why the Bible says, look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And if you see, one of the deception of Satan is to keep your mouth shut. He will come and say, if you open your mouth, you look like a fool. Who are you talking to? When Jesus saw the fig tree, did he keep his mouth shut? No. no. He spoke to it. Yeah. It. it it must be so foolish as person speaking to a tree to a tree at least today, <laughs> at least today when you look at a tree and you speak some people might think you have some bluetooth or something and you're speaking to somebody on the phone but at that time nothing even is speaking to a tree <laughs> people think you have a mental, on mental cases yeah but that, that, that is the wisdom of God. It is foolishness to man. But Satan will say, come on, you look like a big, big, big fool. You may look like a fool. You may sound like a fool. But in the sight of God, you are the one who's right. Amen. And that's why God chooses the foolish things of this world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, let's go back to Ephesians chapter 2. Okay, verse 10. Anybody would like to read? For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. Okay. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus Jesus created in let me read that again for we are his workmanship created in my mother's womb Christ Jesus Christ Jesus what 
Christ Jesus. Tell me the truth. You were born from your mother's womb or you were created in Christ Jesus? Created in Christ Jesus. Nelan, go bring your mother. Let me ask her. <laughs> then, <laughs> you were created in your mother's womb? You were born from your mother's womb or you were created in Christ Jesus? Created in Christ Jesus. When we believed. When you believe? Okay. God's so if you don't believe, you are born from mother's womb. If you believe, you are made created in Christ Jesus. No, in the world we are created in the mother's womb. In this world. Okay. So when you believe in Jesus, that means you are no longer born from your mother's womb. That means suddenly you popped up from the mother's womb when you believe. <laughs> Is that how it was? No. You no longer have a mother anymore. Jesus. Okay. Now, was Jesus born from the mother's womb? Yes. Yes. But was it from the seed of the mother and the father? Or was he conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit? By the power, yes. of, the power, of, the Holy power Holy. of the Holy Spirit. Now, if you read this in Amplified, it uses a word that makes it clear. See this. For we are God's own handiwork, his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus. What? Recreated. I was created in my mother's womb, but now when I believe I am recreated in Christ. Christ. Like born again. Like born again, no? Yes, it is born again. Born again. Yeah, correct, correct. That's why, that's why uh, the Pharisee Christ Nicodemus. Called Nicodemus. 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 John, John 3. The question he asks, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Then came to, then same, the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou do except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Isn't that a good question? Yeah. How many of you over here had the question? Really? Nailing, you had the question? Should I go back into my mother's womb and be born? Second time? I didn't have. Neva had. Neva had. Okay. Neva had. Anybody else had? I never thought about it. You did not think about it that deep. Right? Born again. That's why he says in Ephesians 2 10, you are recreated in Christ Jesus, not in your mother's womb. The born again was not second time going into the mother's womb and being born. The born again was being recreated in Christ Jesus. And how were you recreated? All these years you were living in sin. When you were born in the mother's womb, you were born with sin. But now when you are recreated, you, your, your, your spirit is recreated. There is a new nature put in you. And this nature is called as the nature of righteousness. That is why, according to the Bible, you are no longer classed. You are no longer looked at as a sinner. That's what we think. We think that we are sinners and we don't qualify. No, the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says you are recreated. You are made anew. You are born anew. You are made righteous. You are made holy. You are accepted in the sight of God. And because of that today, God is looking at you as a complete different person. Praise God. That is why now, whenever God sees you, he doesn't see you by name. He doesn't see me as Alistair. He doesn't see you by Nalan. He doesn't see you by Lauren. He doesn't see you by your name. He sees you by Christ Jesus. He puts a lens. Whenever he sees you, he sees Christ Jesus. Why? You were recreated in Christ Jesus. You were born again in Christ Jesus. And because of that, he looks at you as Christ Jesus.
Thank you, Jesus. Yes, thank you, Jesus. That we should even look at the same, we should even look at others also as Christ Jesus. Yeah. Oh, dynamite. Well done. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Yes. You know, when you when you shift that perspective from uh, that person being the person to seeing Jesus, can, do, do you do you uh, go and speak against Jesus or speak bad to Jesus? Or, you know, no. like, no, you don't. So if you keep, you forget that it's that person, but Jesus, but you are talking to Jesus every, it's, it's just a different experience. It's like you're talking to Jesus at all times. He's around you at all times in every, in different forms, in nature, in people. And then it's not a one-way conversation anymore. It's not, you know, waiting to hear that audible voice. Through people, you see Jesus. Yes. Praise God. That, that's why even they said, you know, to be very careful when we even talk about anyone because how Christ see them, how, how Abba Father see them, Abba Father see Jesus in them. Correct. Yeah, so it's like Jesus, like mm. everyone, I mean like Jesus that Abba Father sees. So to be like very, very, very like vigilant when we want to say anything about anyone because Abba Father sees Jesus in every one of us. That's why our perspective Praise is very Jesus. important. Don't look at the people that God has put in your life as grasshoppers. True. That's what the Israelites did. They looked at each mm -hmm. other. They looked at the others around them as grasshoppers. You don't look at people as grasshoppers. She's not holy. She doesn't pray. She doesn't come to church. She's an, he's an alcoholic. He's a drug addict. He's addicted to video games. He doesn't pray. He doesn't. Don't look at them as grasshoppers. You don't know why God, you don't know the purpose they have in your life. Don't look at them from the outside and begin to judge them and say, you're not holy. You're not holy. You're not righteous. You don't know. God could have pointed to you and said, you're not righteous, but God did not do that. He sent his son for you. Then what right do we have to point at others and say, you're not righteous, you're not righteous. When he's saying, I said, I do not only really send my son for you, I send my son for them as well. Praise God. Yeah, the Elliston, last week I was watching this uh, conference uh, where this um, man of God, Benny Hinn, was invited to a youth conference. He said the youth came with all kind of colors on their hair. Their jeans like literally like torn everywhere, but they were so hungry for God. So the moral of the story, do not judge a book by its cover uh, based on their hairstyle or their piercing on their faces and all that. But they were so hungry for the Lord. They were just so hungry for God. So I was like, wow. Like what you're saying, you know, we are just passing judgments unknowingly, perhaps in the past. That person is like this. This person is like that. But this could be the person with tattoos all over. But their heart, you know, like we see the outer appearance, but the Lord sees their heart. Just like David. Yeah. You know, like the, the good brothers. First yeah, Samuel 16, 7. Yeah. yeah, like everyone... The father Jesse brought the maybe the good looking sons and the macho body, but this young kid, young kid, you know, in in maybe the dirty boy uh, was just uh, you know like tending to the sheep, but he was the one that the Lord saw because of the Lord saw his heart, his lovely heart. Correct. Yes. That is why you don't know who God can use. God can use the most unlikely people. That's what we were studying the other day in one of the sessions uh, about uh, David when he found the Egyptian, the Amalekite, when, when David, okay, yeah. uh, you see in the Bible in 1 Samuel 30, if you want, you can read later on. But you see, David was living in a place called Ziglag and that is where all the people were. That is where his, you know, wives were, his children were. And all his wives, children got captive by the Amalekites. They came to take, they came to steal. They, they took them as slaves. They did not kill anybody, but they took them as slaves. 
okay and uh, when they when they were taken as slaves and david is over there we see and he asks the lord he he calls the high priest tells the high priest to bring the scrolls and uh, he asks god what should he do and god said go pursue and when he is on his way he finds a dead egyptian on the floor who's nearly dead and they stop for 400 people 401 people stop for one egyptian when you see in the bible they stop and if you look at it from the outside how does an egyptian has any re- relative with an amalekite no way okay but when you see the bible they fed this egyptian they gave him water they uh, gave him food and he was strengthened and uh, david asked him from where do you come from and he said i'm a young man of egypt servant to an amalekite and they and when david hears that david asks this man can you take us to where they are and this man says yes but make sure you don't hand me back to the hands of my masters and i will take you down to this company so you don't know he looked like an egyptian from the outside he looked like he was unholy he looked like come on how is an egyptian connected to a amalekite but you don't know who god can use god David could have said leave him let him die we have to go god told us to pursue david could have said that but david did not say that they stopped for an egyptian you god doesn't look at the heart condition of how you treat the people above you god always looks at your heart condition how you treat the people below you if you are judging a person by the way they treat a person above him or her no you're wrong judge a, you have to look at the person the way he is treating him or her below him you can't judge you can't say jesus is humble by looking at the way he judged the pharisees you can look at jesus and say he's humble because the way he judged the, the disciples he was the feet he humbled himself he's just going to say that Yeah, I was going to give the exact same uh, example. So like the way that came to me is in the kingdom, um, the spelling of leader is S-E-R-V-A-N-T. So <laughs> that is how Jesus was. It keeps you humble when you know, you know, that um, it's not you who is serving, but Jesus who wants to serve through you. And so, how do you serve? I want to get angry, but I'll shut my mouth. That is how you serve. I want to eat the entire tub of ice cream, entire two scoops of ice cream, but I can leave one for my sister. <laughs> That is how you serve. I want to judge this person, but I will go and hug this person. That is how you serve. Small things. and that 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 like um the higher up you go the ladder the lower down you have to keep yourself and so that is why the one who humbles himself will be exalted and that's why i always say this you know why people always want to be first because they want to be last according to the kingdom of god they yeah. think that if i do i can be first but they don't realize the more you try to be first the more you will be last you be the last because god's kingdom works the one who humbles himself the one who says yes to god the one who's humbling humbling lowering himself and saying yes to the lord is the one who's exalted hallelujah hallelujah everybody want to say anything thank you jesus share anything Praise God. Anyone? Yeah, somebody raised hand. Yes. Mm. Sakshi, you want to say anything? I think it was a mistake. By mistake, yeah. anybody any testimonies before we finish for today
Praise God. Okay, then we'll finish with the Thanksgiving prayer. Would anyone like to make the Thanksgiving prayer? I'll do it. Yeah, Neil, go ahead. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, Lord, for teaching us today about two very important topics, Lord. What you did on the cross for us. Lord, you taught us about grace and righteousness. That when we believe by faith about grace, when we believe, faith, uh, believe by faith grace, then we also receive a free gift from you, that is righteousness, Lord. Lord, thank you for giving us this wonderful time to listen to your word. Thank you for bringing us together here. Lord, as we are about to move out from this session, help us to remember whatever your Holy Spirit told through our listening to us. Lord, when we move out of this session, we know that thousands of thousands of thoughts will come and majority of them contradicting your word, Lord. Lord, help us to conquer those thoughts by speaking the word of God loud, Lord Jesus, and not shutting our mouths and accepting the thoughts which come contradicting to your word, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 <clears throat> amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 So thank you, everyone. Those watching on Facebook, if you want to join for the healing session. Oh, it stopped. Okay, the live stopped. Okay, we'll put.